Welcome back to Sports Days. Yes, emotional scenes from the ball arena as the Denver Nuggets clinched their first NBA title. And who better to lead them to glory than the MVP himself, Nikola Jokic? A very big congratulations to the Denver Nuggets. Of course, I have two amazing gentlemen with me today on the show. I have Moses and Terry. Good afternoon, guys. Welcome good to Sports afternoon. Days. Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks for being here. How's the mood like? <laughs> No more, football, there. Too. no more football. Um, there's still football though. There's still international yeah, games that are coming up. Yes, just, definitely. Just that we are so used to yeah. you know, the Chelsea, exactly United, yeah. Yeah. Matches. Yeah. <laughs> but there are still games that are still coming up. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be having a lot of games before All right. they proceed. Before yeah, before yeah, before they will, they will go on break. Finally. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's now official. K Ngolo Kante is now. Um, Alit Hat, yes, I hope I pronounced that rightly. He has officially signed with the Saudi Arabian uh, club. Now, what is it about Saudi Arabia and snatching all our players? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very soon, they'll take Mbappe <coughs> from us. Economic power. Okay. And uh, Haaland, what will we have left? I don't think uh, you mentioned something earlier that why is it that everybody wants to go to? Yes, uh, it's not I mean, it's money, you but everybody, <laughs> though. You cannot say everybody, but okay. I know that certain players that have won it all in Europe, you know. It's always good for you to like go there and get your retirement yeah. package. Okay. For people like Ngolo Kante, he has won the World Cup, won the Champions League, he has won the Premier League, mm -hmm. he has won almost everything that needed to be won. So what, sure. what exactly is he doing? He's not actually playing at his highest level right now. So why can't you just go there? Pick and being the a Muslim is good for yeah. you to go and play in a Muslim country. Get all the money that you can be able to get. Say to your family, say to your, your generation, <laughs> say good one for him. Of course, a very good one for him. He'll be playing alongside um, France teammate um, Karim Benzema. Benzema also came out to say that he's Muslim. He understands their culture, everything. Everything just fits perfect. He has definitely, won the Ballon d'Or, Champions League. He has won it all. Yeah, he he doesn't have it. Apart from the World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if he does not win the World Cup, I mean, come on. He won the Ballon d'Or. He has won everything there is to win. So I, I just feel like uh, when you look at players going there, there are players like uh, he has said, there are players who has won it all. Okay. Who, who when you look at their age and what they've done so far, they feel like they've given everything they can give on the biggest stage. Sure. So they just feel like, okay, it's time for me to go to a league like, you know, it had where the expectation is not too high, where they can enjoy their football at least, you know, and get that soft uh, pay. You know, pay package and ah, well the money you know, is quite tempting, exactly you know? of course it is you know it's, it's all about the money it's all about the money i mean okay so there was this poster it's called show from um audio nigale <laughs> he said why do we play football are we playing it just to be famous are we playing it to be on tv we are playing football for the money i'm sure that's why everybody wake up from sleep they go to their fellow job their different you know place of yeah. um endeavor in life Money is money. very, very important. There's no way you say that. Ah, I'm not just doing it for the money. I mean, money, it's money, for the money. Like, I was yeah. expecting money, Benzema to say, money, I did this for the money. And he's saying that <laughs> yeah, I did they, it because they I'm will Muslim. Come out, they will know? come out clearly come, to come and say that, ah, the money. But definitely yeah, money was also an attractive. I mean, there are Muslim clubs like Al Ali. Yeah, we, we all know that. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go to Al Ali? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, their, their league is not the same. The league is sure. not the same. The level of the league is not the same. But then the most attractive factor is the money. The money. Okay. Another player that might just be on his way to an, to another Saudi Arabia club is Romelu Lukaku and of course um, Mauricio Pochettino has come out to say that he, he wants to give him a chance to prove himself at Chelsea but but the way we are looking at it if Saudi Arabian club brings the money Lukaku might just be another player to be joining the Saudi League I think they've already pushed um, Lukaku but if I were him I, I don't think Lukaku has won the, the Champions League no, he has not won it. Oh, he has league. actually. He won oh. it with Chelsea in 2012. 2012? Yeah, I saw the video. Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't know. So if he has won it, then what are you waiting he for? He won it on the bench, <laughs> but he got his Venus medal. <laughs> what is he waiting for? He should just go there. You know, age is no longer on his side. And yeah. he's not really playing at the highest level. Okay. Imagine the Romelu Lukaku that will know coming from the bench, you know, starting from the bench, the Champions League final. They're like the biggest game of the season you are coming from the bench it tells you something that uh, this guy is no longer the Lukaku that and he missed lots of chances that yeah he missed that that has actually been one of the things that has that have come to know about Lukaku for the since the last time that he was in Chelsea sure. he has been missing a lot of chances I don't know if he's luck or anything I don't really believe in luck though but I think there is something wrong with him that 
I don't know if it's confidence or anything, but he has been missing a lot of chances. Speaking of ill luck, the Brian also, he was, you know, Yeah, he was also injured, like, the, the first uh, 2021 final, the first Champions League final mm -hmm. that he played, he also got Against injured, Chelsea, also yeah. got injured in this particular final. It's not surprising, though, because over the course of the last uh, two seasons, he has been struggling with injuries. De Bruyne has been struggling with okay. injuries, so it's And I think he expected. was fatigued. Yeah, too. after playing... In how many competitions, playing for how many matches, he's expected. I'm sure everyone expected him to he's be the expected. man of the match, but you know. Yeah, of course. Now, yeah. up until that time that he he left the pitch, he was actually good. Okay. He played very very. Okay, well. so what's this sticking with Lukaku? Yeah, um, Pochettino has come out to say that he, he can still give him a second chance. But Moses, what do you think um, Lukaku can actually add to Chelsea at this stage? Well, at this point in time, I just feel like Lukaku really need to take advantage of the fact that Chelsea don't have. You know, is you know a natural number nine like okay. him, so we need to take that opportunity as okay. This is I just need to take this opportunity and rewrite my wrongs and prove myself, so people can really know you know what I can do, you know and you know and be that player that everybody thought he was, because for quite some times now Lukaku has not been able to you know discover himself ever since he left. The Premier League to join the, you know, Syria side and sure. coming back to the Premier League, he has just been this player who doesn't really, you know, can hit the ground running. And like he said the other time, you know, we've seen so many instances where Lukaku has missed so many golden chances, not just in the league, even at the World Cup. We saw it with Belgium too. Okay. So it's not that maybe his problem it has to do with the club, but you know, the issue has to do with himself. I just feel like psychologically physically he's not fit you know and he's not even in form yeah. as a striker so i feel like pochettino coming in as a new manager and willing and ready to give him another opportunity once again to play for a club like chess mm -hmm. i feel like lukaku really needs to take this opportunity so are you saying this as a, are you saying this as a united back? fan or as a you know sports lover we actually want to go back to chelsea because, because i'm not sure i don't think he wants to go back to yeah chelsea. him himself he does not i, I don't, don't think, think he yeah. want to go back and i raised something that uh internally i want to even have a conversation they have want to have a conversation with chelsea yeah. concerning um lukaku, lukaku and i think uh, onana or something like yeah. that and one of the things that they want to say they want to ensure that they keep Lukaku and for me as an individual I won't have wanted uh, Lukaku to go back to Chelsea because I, don't I believe want that, that the same thing mm -hmm. that played the last time that he was in Chelsea will still play Definitely. so the best thing for him to to do is let him just look for a permanent solution where they can be able to either terminate his contract with Chelsea or let them see how they can be able to like buy him with but let it, them but call but the or they can take him and give us to Nana but, but, the issue, <laughs> but the issue now is if he should leave in Tamilan Milan okay. and not want to go back to Chelsea which top club in no inter milan wants to retain him okay they want to retain they want him. to retain him they don't even want him to go back to chelsea they want to retain him i think they still have good plans for him i would have seen because for me i believe that you know the <laughs> the the challenges in premiership premiership is actually very very hard and very very tough okay in the syria the pressure is not as much as it is in the premier league you if you observe look he has also been injured this season and even when he was when he came back from injury, he was not starting matches. The only matches that he started were matches that were not that important to mm -hmm. Inter Milan. But if he goes to Chelsea, the expectation will be very very high that oh this guy has come back. Maybe finally he can be able to like prove us wrong. You know all those kind of well, stuff. So I will, if I were him, I would still remain. In, I mean, uh, I don't I don't mind if Syria. he remains in Inter Milan. <laughs> I mean, we're good. <laughs> but still, the rumor still believes that he might. Just be on his way to Saudi Arabia. And I want to believe that is the Ronaldo effect. I think ever since Ronaldo moved to Al Nasir, <laughs> I feel like he has set the pace. And every other big stars out there in Europe might just want to go and join him. I mean, Ronaldo is there. Why don't we go there? No, still sticking with the Ronaldo effect. <laughs> yeah. Ever since he made that controversial interview with Piers Morgan, Manchester United has been up for sale and now the beat to buy manchester united has been lingering for so long but rumor has it that just last night that the shaykh the shesh <laughs> did i get that right uh, all right shek jasim has officially bought manchester united and their um profit has skyrocketed i don't know how true that is but do you want to clear that for us Moses? Uh, well for me it's still a speculation because okay. it's not been confirmed officially it's just the local outlet and the reason why people you know really 
I feel like it's a substance yeah. is because the local outlets, you know, that disclose that information is owned by Sheikh Jassim's dad, okay. who happens to be the former prime minister of, uh, of Qatar. So him com the, the, the outlets coming out and announcing that uh, Sheikh Jassim is closer to, you know, uh, owning Manchester United and people should expect an announcement soon. Right. Aside that, uh, a prominent uh, businessman in Qatar as well has come out, you know, on his official Twitter page mm -hmm. to congratulate uh, Sheikh Jassim. Okay. And in just in the space of two, is it two hours that he posted that, you know, he was able to get over 22,000 likes. You understand? For you to know how excited and people you know, are, especially people my are United, especially fans, United yeah. fans, they can't just wait you know, to, to have a new owner and somebody who is really passionate, who really wants to take the club forward, not just somebody who is looking to take out dividends every year and not willing to invest in the club. Okay. And I feel like right now, you know, as a Man United fan, we are just tired. We can't wait to see the Glazers back because all along, they've not invest a penny on Man United. Instead, they're always taking dividends every year, except for last year that it stopped taking dividends, okay. but they've been doing that. They, mo they bought Manchester United for not, you know, more than maybe 800 million pounds. And now they want to sell for 6 billion pounds. Mm -hmm. That means they've made, you know, times 10 of, of course, how much they obviously. bought. Obviously. And funny enough, the money they used in buying Manchester United, they borrowed the money and up to now they've not paid the money. So it's like they've levied the debt on Man United to be servicing debt every year, year in, year out. And we don't want that kind of owner, you know, for a big club like Manchester United. So I feel like it's high time and we will all welcome you know, Sheikh Jassim to Man United because we've seen what the Saudis and the Qataris have done in clubs they've owned. They've done so well for those clubs, the likes of Manchester City and PSG. And all players. right. Yeah. Um, so, Terry, yeah. do you agree with most? Definitely, 100%. 100% with everything that you said because Manchester United is a very big club. Okay. It's a very, very big club. It's in the whole world, if you want to mention clubs, there is no way you mention at least two names, two big football clubs in the world that you not mention Manchester United. Okay. But over the past how many years, over the past 10 years, Manchester United have been a shadow of itself. And still, these guys have been there, ripping the, the club. If not because of the Ronaldo interview, many of us won't have even known exactly what is going on in that club. Yeah. That was why, ir irrespective of the fact that a lot of Manchester United fans came out to criticize Ronaldo, I saw some positives in the interview. This is even one of the positives. Yeah, I saw a lot of positives from that particular interview, even though I did not agree with him that he should have gone public in that yeah. way. Okay. But I saw a lot of public because he opened people's eyes to what is actually going on in Manchester United. Mm -hmm. And that was even the reason why these guys decide to even put the... And let's not forget, he also threw shade on Wayne Rooney. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is just... That's aside. the best part. <laughs> <laughs> that aside, but we all know that these guys, they don't want to lay that club or they don't yeah. want to sell. They don't want to sell. Would you let my United that go if you own it? Yeah, um, <laughs> the way it is, if I, you know, one thing with being a leader, no matter how much you love a particular club or maybe no matter how much you love your people if you know that you're not the right person for them you step aside yeah. and allow another person who can be able to like take those people to the promised land to come i mean i think that's, that's what, exactly um, what Roman Abraham movie yeah it chelsea. depends it, it, you know no that guy didn't want to leave chelsea no. but because <laughs> of to leave. yeah nobody yeah. wanted him to leave because mm -hmm. it was just like his own child it was just like a paid project mm -hmm. for him so Taking him away from Chelsea was one of the most difficult decisions that he sure. made. Yeah. But then he did it for the interest of the club. And that is exactly what I want these people to do. I want these yeah. guys to look at what Manchester United is right now and then look at how it can be able to like develop. Because if this uh, Sheikh Jassim finally take over Manchester United, then I'm just telling you that in the next five years, five years might even be too much. Because if you look at all the things that he has outlined that he wants yes. to do for Manchester United, <coughs> man, if you're a fan, you know, you and I you and, and this was way. making me understand that he, <laughs> he has been a childhood like yeah my united fan and he said he's ready to who better to take my united no even Radcliffe Radcliffe is also a Manchester United yeah, yeah but yeah. most is making me understand that he bid for Chelsea but this is why we had mixed feelings with Radcliffe was you know he bid for Chelsea yeah. he fought on bully mm -hmm. and he's a businessman yeah Radcliffe, apart from him being a Manchester United fan he's also a businessman club niece and we saw how Nice has been badly managed. And we don't want that. It might not necessarily United be the fans. same thing with uh, Manchester exactly. United. Though. And what my United really wants <laughs> is that out of frustration, we want the Glazers out.
permanently. But Ratcliffe is still ready to retain two of the brothers. He that only wants to buy 60% and give them 20% of the deal. He which wants Manchester see, United doesn't want. Do you, do you understand? See, everybody is looking for control rights. Yeah. Yeah. Ratcliffe knows that if he does not include those guys into the deal, there is no way they will be able to say it to him because he does not have the financial capacity of the uh, Arab guys. Yeah. So the only way he could be able to like, okay, make these guys listen to him is for him to buy the club and still make them part owners of the club. Okay. That move was not just because of anything. It, it was yeah. because he wanted to have... But I think that was a smart move. It was a very smart move. It was a very smart move. And I'm sure the Glazer brothers would rather sell to Rattie. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah, but that is that the reason, the that is even wise. the reason why he's yeah. still in contention up to now. Yeah, sporting mm -hmm. wise. Sporting is just like an administration that has been badly managed, right? You want them to change the people at the end of affairs the person coming in you would not want the person to retain the old bad people eggs yeah yeah because they've been the ones spoiling things okay so how do you want to tell me that you want to succeed with you working with and the <laughs> with that same <laughs> back end. definitely you know, we all know yeah it, most it's going to be very hard for yeah, the Manchester United fans to know. trust Ratley. not just <laughs> even, if, you understand? even if you are business, not a fan of Manchester business United. wise business wise okay, we know yeah. it's business but sporting wise we'll be like why do you still want to retain this person when we know what they can do yeah. what they are capable of even though they won't be the major shareholder mm -hmm. they will retain the minority but still we want to see them leave do you, you know, know the bad completely they, 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 uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, they, are, <laughs> just, they should just take their bulk of cash and just and go and go, go and don't come back you know <laughs> manchester united situation is so bad that even the new trust mm -hmm. even people that are not even related to, they, they are not even linked to manchester united they are even having pity on them i don't know if i have to them i'm just saying he said manchester united is a big club but at some point, when he was in Man United, he said they were in an hotel only for them to send him a message that the Coca-Cola he drank at the hotel yesterday, that they would deduct it Can from the salary. Yes. Hello? <laughs> as in, this has come as a shock to me. Honestly. I, I saw something like that. Just I didn't, I didn't read the details. Their training, their like training ground has been there for the past 15 years. There's no development, no restructuring. We see the likes of Tottenham. They have a new stadium, new facilities. And that's what you expect of a big club like Manchester United. You saw the likes of Real Madrid. You know, when you have to evolve with the way football is going. But right now, the Glazers, they are not ready to do that. They are, they are not actually ready to mm -hmm. spend the money. They are they are always out after milking Manchester United after their profit sure. after their after what they can be able to like gain from the club. It's not about the club. I don't think they even love the club. I don't, don't. think they are even fans of the club. They don't. They are just after what they can be able to get. That just yes. Commercial and you, if you look at the commercial wise, they feel like Manchester United that they are one of those clubs who makes money. You know, from endorsements, deals, and they are, sales actually, and all that. Uh, and I feel like uh, they are. Moses, Moses yeah. I don't even feel like I don't even feel that those guys are even real businessmen because if they you're are, a real businessman, if you are milking from something, yeah. something is giving you money, you should be able to take good to care take of good that. Take good care too. of it because if they have been taking good care of Manchester United, I'm not sure that any fan would have come out to come and at say all. that. I want you guys? I mean, look at the last time fans have been fighting these guys for yeah. over years, for okay. how many years? They've been fighting them for a long time. That tells you something that these guys have been bad managers in, in well, it's all thanks to ronaldo we yeah. are calling them out for who they really are yeah. <laughs> but before we go let's just like round up this um my united takeover saga where do you think um what do you think actually is the best are way they? forward for manchester united let's hear from moses who is a united fan uh, well i feel like the best way forward right now is for the glazers okay to look into the two bids that has been tabled. Sure. You know, we don't want a minority. Most uh, they don't state. need to look in. Let them just say yes. 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 Let them <laughs> simple. Let them not look yes. at it. There's nothing they Before can the end of this week, we want them to choose the best. And the best in which we feel like is the best. They should not choose the best Jackson. for themselves. They should choose the for best the for the club. For the club. <laughs> and, and if Jersey had chosen yeah. the best for the club, I'm sure we'd be in a situation right Jackson now. Jersey is the best for the club. Because he has the interest of the club at heart and yeah. that's the reason why he wants to invest you know aside and he wants to clear the he wants to clear the debt that's as the well. first clear thing he's going to yes. do clear that debt the and debt is invest. close to a billion dollars close to a billion dollars he wants to clear the debt reinvest you know in this player uh, in the, the structure the stadium and even uh the environment as well so yeah. i feel like Sheikh jasim is the best person to i take mean to over. some oh i feel like if yeah. my united sells it to Sheikh jasim 
I'm sure Manchester United might just be like <laughs> Manchester City. Uh, Who uh, wants to travel they during they the weekend? Know, they will definitely be more than Manchester City oh, because okay. the, the the history of Manchester United is yeah. is very very high. So yeah, but currently City is like yeah, the that's king. what I'm saying. That if you take that history into it, into contest, yeah, into contest, yes. and then couple with the fact that they have the economic ability, ability and everything has been refurbished around Manchester United to make them more strong. I mean, very well, very I think about my United. I still believe Manchester United is one of the best clubs, the biggest in the entire it's, world. It's one of the biggest. One of the biggest, you know. Mad uh, we, we talk about Real Madrid, you know. After Real Madrid, we talk about Manchester United. Mostly, you know, compare. No. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> I don't even know. Of course, see, you need to give Real Madrid is the biggest club. You need to give Real Madrid. Real Madrid is the biggest club. I don't even know where Chelsea comes in. Chelsea. I don't. 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 <laughs> Our time is already fast spent. I'm sorry we can't talk about Kylian Mbappe. Hopefully, when the show returns tomorrow, we'll have more time to talk about it. Thank you so much, guys, for being on the show. Yeah, with me. thanks for having me. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Always Thank an you. amazing time with you guys. Thank you to our amazing viewers. Let's do this again, same time, same station tomorrow. I am Darius Mbappe. Bye for now. Use her pace and use her strength and finish brilliantly. For good sports in games, we all love good sport. The joy of winning.